yeah. The story begins in the middle of a snowstorm just a week before Christmas. The infamous Jack Frost has been captured after a five-year spree spanning 11 states and leaving 38 bodies in his wake. He was captured in the fictional town of Snowmonton and is being transferred to the state penitentiary for execution at midnight. The town's sheriff Tyler was just in the right place at the right time when he came upon Frost burying a body in the woods. Ever since the arrest he's been haunted by Frost's threat that he will find a way to have his revenge on him. During the inmate's transfer he kills his fellow passenger in the back of the van and impersonates his voice flawlessly to the officers. Due to lack of visibility the driver's unable to see the approaching genetics research truck and crashes head first sending them both rolling into a ditch. Jack escapes the truck, but when he goes at the surviving officers he's exposed to chemicals from the wreckage causing his flesh to melt from his bones and he dissolves into the snow. His DNA fuses with it in a Disney-esque cartoon and he becomes an organic pile of powder that escapes the scene. Tyler and his wife Annie drive past it later but don't think much of it as it's already past Frost's scheduled execution. The next morning the family hear over the radio that the nightmare's over as Frost died in the crash, which is just a cover-up issued by Agent Manners of the FBI. After Ryan gives his father a blob of homemade oatmeal for lunch, Tyler heads down to the Fawn Lodge where the snowman building competition's taking place. The Metzner family win every year with Sally and Jake taking the helm of the veiled creation. Their daughter Jill's not even allowed to look at it while her brother Billy couldn't care less about the event. It's not hard to believe they win with Tommy Snowbabe he calls Cindy Snowflake being their only competition. He's planning on meeting up with Jill tonight to go snowballing whatever that is and works part-time for his father Paul across the street. Tyler discusses with the hardware owner the 20% discount he receives for being the best cop this town's ever seen. When the sheriff gets back to the station his assistant Marley gives him the bad news. Old man Harper's been found murdered but deputies Joe and Chris have found no footprints or vehicle tracks in the area. Tyler gets on the phone to the bureau and confirms with Manners that Jack did indeed die in the accident, but when he gets off the call it's revealed by Agent Stone that they created the chemical themselves. It worked exactly as intended though wasn't meant to be used on a homicidal maniac, so the agents travel to Snowmonton to clean up the mess. Looking over the corpse, Doc Peters informs Tyler that Harper's had his neck broken by what looks like a giant oven mitt. Hearing of the murder the townspeople are demanding to know what the sheriff's going to do but he assures them the killer's already a hundred miles away by now. Paul jumps on the opportunity to offer them a 20% discount on all ammunition in this time of need. When they leave for the hardware store Joe tries his luck with Marla but she rejects him despite the town being slim pickings for men. Meanwhile at home, Annie notices a large snowman in the front yard but when she asks Ryan about it he claims to have no knowledge of who built it. When the boy goes outside to finish it off he doesn't notice the cavity he creates grows icicles for teeth. It turns out Billy's also the local bully and begins picking on Ryan for his weak attempt at building a snowman so it pushes Billy over into the way of an oncoming sled completely decapitating him. Once the boy's body's taken away, Tyler gets an earful from Jake who believes the sheriff's boy was somehow involved, which makes sense considering he's telling everyone that the snowman did it. That night the family hear a noise from outside, so Tyler goes to check it out, but it's just Paul making the late night rounds offering 20% off bags of salt. 20 off. Over at the Metzner residence Jake's showing his more abusive side, yelling at Jill for going out despite her brother dying not five hours ago. He then orders Sally to finish knitting him his scarf before going out back for some more firewood. While taking a breather he hears a voice and assumes it's coming from behind the snowman, but he finds nothing until it suddenly takes his axe and fatally shoves its handle down his throat. Frosty then goes after Sally in her living room, forming behind her multiple times before finally strangling her with the Christmas lights and smashing her head into a box of ornaments. Then leaves her with a snowflake stuck in the top of her head to be found by Paul during his 20% sales pitch. Soon after agents Manners and Stone show up in Snowmonton and ask Sheriff Tyler to see the crime scene, the deputies look over the corpse while the federal agents are more interested in the puddle her killer left behind. On inspection Stone discovers that Jack Frost can now turn himself into snow and melt at will, and gained access to the home through the doggy door. Neither tell Sheriff Tyler that the killer's really Frost and just order him to put the town under 24-hour curfew. They go to the Fawn Lodge and warn the gathered townspeople about a maniac in Snowmonton, when Paul having run all the way back from the Metzner's house in the cold suddenly begins destroying the competition snowmen, claiming that the killer's one of them and looking crazy to everyone else. Manners knocks him out to keep him from revealing anything further, so Joe takes Paul to a holding cell to calm down while Chris is sent to find out what's got him so terrified. Jack Frost stands in the middle of the road but due to the agent's misinformation, Chris attempts to remove it with a snow shovel when it instantly melts. Okay. He returns to the trunk of the cruiser but Frosty's reformed inside and reverses over the officer. Jack then heads to the sheriff's house and enters his water while Annie just thinks he's a leaky pipe. 
She's met by Joe who's been sent by her husband to bring her to a safer location. But when leaving they pass Jill and Tommy who've come to get revenge for Jill's family by breaking in. Not sure of their original intention but the couple instantly begin stripping down with a plan to linger, before Jill goes into the bathroom while Tommy gets them a drink. Finding the freezer full of snow with a single carrot, Tommy hears someone approaching the front door and checks it out. Frost knocks him back and enters but the brave kid squares up with him and shanks him with an ice pick. But it obviously does nothing and Tommy's nailed to the wall with an icicle and ran through the skull with another. Jack then goes to the bathroom and poses as bathwater which Jill thinks her boyfriend's prepared. Carrot first, Frost reappears and emerges from the tub with her arms trapped in his shoulders. After he's finished slamming Jill's head into the wall repeatedly, Frosty kills her with the crude line that Christmas came early this year and sticks his carrot back in. At the police station Manners is talking about bringing more men in but with the snowstorm Marla warns them that they'll be unable to use helicopters. Stone almost lets slip the origins of the snowman but his fellow agent warns him not to say another word. Just then Chris's cruiser pulls up to the station but they just find it empty with the seats soaking wet. Marla is almost killed by Frost but Manners uses a gun that's able to harm him, but it doesn't bring him down for long and they all hold up inside the station for protection. When firing at the water, Stone says that Jack can only be harmed when he's in his snowman state, but for some reason when Frost forms back into that state they all just run, leaving only Tyler to try to battle his nemesis with a hairdryer. It works but the cable's short-lived, so the sheriff catches up to the rest of the group where Stone demands they don't harm the snowman. Manners disagrees and knocks him unconscious, as he plans to blow him and the entire station up with a load of aerosol cans. Their only way out of the station is through a locked window, requiring Tyler to go back and retrieve the keys as Jack begins slowly making his way inside. The keys drop in the puddle as Frost begins to reform and grabs at Tyler, but he manages to escape as well as free Paul from his holding cell on the way out. First hurling Stone's tiny ragdoll through the window, the rest of the group make it outside just in time and Manners blows the station with a single round. This does nothing though as Jack pulls himself back together albeit a little Picasso of himself. The survivors all regroup in the Fawn Lodge but for some reason lock Joe and Marla outside, so the two finally go back to her place where they remain safe for the rest of the movie. Inside the lodge Tyler tells everyone to remain calm and demands answers from Stone in private. He reveals himself to be an agent of the genetic research company that created the acid. It was made to store human DNA with inert material, so that in case of a nuclear apocalypse humans could be resurrected from the earth. The first human test subject was accidentally Frost, who didn't just get stored but he retained his murderous personality, suggesting to Stone that the human soul's actually a chemical that was able to bond with the snow when Jack died. Deciding on a plan for killing the snowman, Tyler leads the team in luring Frost back to the building. He makes an entrance as a giant snowball but gets himself trapped inside behind a wall of blow dryers. Using extension leads this time, the group force him into the basement where he's locked inside the furnace and evaporates. As the townspeople of Snowmonton celebrate their victory, Manners notices the steam from the furnace beginning to condense. Jack instantly reforms and bites the agent's face off, then is almost convinced by Stone to let him turn him back into a human but is having too much fun being an immortal snowman. Instead of killing Stone right away he uses his body to sneak past everyone to Tyler, then spills out of his skin suit and chases the sheriff back inside his truck with Ryan. Before they can escape, Frost traps them inside and begins transferring himself in, so Tyler kicks the window out and throws the only thing within arm's reach at Jack. The bag of oatmeal from Ryan begins to melt the snowman revealing his weakness to be antifreeze, as the kids put it in his father's lunch believing it could help keep him from getting cold. Now partially wounded and showing his insides, Jack's cleaned up by Paul who's come to help save the day. He's informed of the plan by Tyler and races across the road to grab all the antifreeze he has. Then begins filling the bed of his truck up to the brim. Tyler keeps Frost distracted, leading him through the lodge until eventually being cornered by him in an upstairs room. With barely any talking or boasting the snowman grows an icicle and runs it into Tyler's chest nearly killing him, but the horn of Paul's truck signals for him to tackle Jack through the window where Paul gets there just in time to catch the pair. The sheriff beats on the snowman like he's riding a gator until eventually Jack completely melts away into the antifreeze. Assuming it's all over, Ryan picks up an arm left behind of Jack's which begins to smother him, but his mother throws him into the antifreeze and Tyler baptizes him until Jack Frost is finally no more. The next morning the antifreeze is poured back into the containers and buried deep within the Snowmonton Cemetery. With the police only just now arriving, Paul asks Tyler what they're going to tell them which he replies to say that it's too late, but the containers beneath them are shown to be bubbling as Jack waits to be freed once again. And the movie ends. Looks like deep fried Jack's off the menu for tonight, huh? So you made it. I appreciate your time. I couldn't have done it without you.
tell your mother I said thanks.